speak up again. In terms of classes, we have to uh, have five more, and after next Sunday, I, when we know what uh, is going to be happening, I will send out a letter to the class to find out when it's possible to meet, that we can be sure everyone will be in attendance. Um, for Bible study, we can begin that any time. If you're interested in having Bible study resume, please tell me that today, uh, so we see if there is enough interest, and I'm happy to hear what book you would like to study this year. Um, I think that's what I have to report. Is there anything else? Right? If not, we're ready for our gathering, hymn number 551.
without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First lesson is from Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, beginning with the 7th verse. So you mortal, I have made a sent sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now, you mortals, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Here is the Bible, Psalm 119, it's found in your celebrate. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Turn my eyes from beholding the falsehood. Give me life in your way. Turn away the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. And it's from the 13th chapter of Romans, beginning with the 8th verse. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the love who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and lasciviousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Here ends the reading. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> when something happens, big or small, is it just because that's how things turned out? Or is it because God planned it that way? 
I'm sure that we could spend the rest of the day talking about that question. I myself would say it's mixed. Yes, there were a few major events in my life that I think that God wanted it that way. But yesterday, when I was at a house auction and bid on a solid table with four nice wooden chairs simply because they were so cheap, I don't believe that God had a strong opinion either way. Yes, I won the table and chairs for only five dollars. God's doing? I doubt it. I hope that God has more important things to do than engineering my winning a cheap table. Back in ancient times, the Jews suffered a catastrophe about 587 BC. What happened? The army of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon besieged the Jewish capital of Jerusalem and eventually took control of the city. The city was destroyed, including the great temple built by King Solomon. After watching his family being killed, the last Jewish king was blinded and taken off to exile. Along with him went many of the leading people of the land, not because they wanted to be exiles, but because the Babylonian king made them go. As I said, it was a catastrophe. You can read all about it in 2 Kings chapters 24 and 25 and in 2 Chronicles 36. Now, why did this catastrophe occur? Just because the king of Babylon was stronger than the king of Judah and so won the war? Could be. But the ancient spokespersons for God saw it differently. For example, here is 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 15 to 17. Quote, The Lord, the God of their ancestors, had continued to send prophets to warn his people because he wanted to spare them and the temple. But they made fun of God's messengers, ignoring his words and laughing at his prophets. Until at last the Lord's anger against his people was so great that there was no escape. So the Lord brought the king of Babylonia to attack them. The king killed the young men of Judah, even in the temple. He had no mercy on anyone, young or old, man or woman, sick or healthy. God handed them all over to him." End quote. In other words, when this catastrophe happened, the folks who wrote the books that we now have in the Bible wanted people to see this as God's doing, as God's punishment. It was more than just my king is weaker than your king, so I lose. It was, God sent your king to defeat my king. But why? Because the so-called people of God were living the life God wanted them to live. So God sent the messengers to warn them, because God didn't want them to fall into this kind of trouble but the people didn't listen. Now, all of this is a kind of introduction to today's first reading from the book of Ezekiel. In this reading, it is God who is talking to Ezekiel, telling Ezekiel that if he does not warn the people, he is responsible. But if he does warn them, and they simply refuse to listen, then Ezekiel did his part, and the people have only themselves to blame. This all sounds rather grim, 
doesn't it? But please notice the words of grace that are also found in today's reading. God says right out, quote, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. It's not God's wish that they be punished. What he wants is, quote, that the wicked turn from their ways and live. And then he makes this heartfelt appeal. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die? In other words, it's not necessary for you to die. I know that you will find this very hard to believe, but I was once a very wicked child. Mother had taken me up the street to spend some time playing with Conrad Bosser, a boy my own age. I must have enjoyed the time with Conrad, because when Mother came back for me, I didn't want to go home. Instead, I ran up the alley to the commercial heart of Valley View. I don't know why my mother didn't just run after me to catch me, but she didn't and I got away. Well, in the commercial heart of our town was a hardware store where my father worked. So I went to him. Obviously, he was surprised to see me. How did you get here? I told a lie. Uncle Ambrose brought me. That night, I got my only licking that I can remember. Were my parents happy to send me to my room and spank me? I'm sure not. They would much have preferred that I did what I was told to do, not run off, not tell lies, and very stupid lies at that, to try to cover my tracks. I guess my learning is if you're going to tell a lie, at least say something intelligent. <laughs> if I'd done what they wanted, they wouldn't have needed to teach me a lesson the hard way so that I wouldn't run off again and put myself in unnecessary danger. God is like our parents. God isn't looking for ways to punish us. God wants us to live and to be in fellowship with God and one another, living happily ever after. As God says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Now, this lesson from Ezekiel, of course, is Old Testament, before Jesus. What Jesus adds when he comes along is a demonstration on the cross of how greatly God wants us to live. Not only does God send us another spokesperson to instruct us in how to behave towards God and one another, now in Jesus, God sends us the perfect example, the perfect Savior to rescue us from our evil and stupidity. Jesus on the cross is saying just what our lesson from Ezekiel says, only in the most vivid, dramatic way possible. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. But one final thought, the wicked, who are they? We would probably think, that's the fellow who escaped from prison where he was being held because he stabbed his former girlfriend to death. The wicked, they're the drug dealers, the cyber criminals, the Russian soldiers who commit atrocities in Ukraine. Yes, indeed, they are. But back in the time of Ezekiel, 
the wicked that he and God were talking about were the people who thought of themselves as the people of God. The king, who was seen as God's anointed ruler. The priests, who ministered in the Jerusalem temple. The successful people of the time. Going now to 2 Chronicles, chapter 34, verse 14, quote, All the leading priests and the people also were exceedingly unfaithful. End quote. The people also exceedingly unfaithful. The wicked weren't the criminal element of society. The wicked were any people who were unfaithful to God. They were the people who needed to hear Ezekiel say, turn back. They were the people who needed, in a later time, to hear Jesus say, I am the way and the truth and the life, come to me. In the beginning of this sermon, I asked, when something happens, big or small, is it just because that's how things turned out, or is it because God planned it that way? It doesn't seem to me that God planned for the wicked to be wicked or for those unfaithful people to be the unhappy victims of divine judgment. It seems instead that God sees the wicked as having a choice when God says that he wants the wicked to turn from their ways and live. The word of grace is that they are not doomed. They have an opportunity for something better. We have an opportunity for something better too. To jump quickly to our second reading from Romans, our opportunity is nothing less than this, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live. Amen.
We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed, page 85. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous work of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Hold us accountable, O God. Show your church where repentance is needed and lead us in paths of intentional compassion and listening. Help us extend hands of reconciliation and care, especially in relationships with other Christians and people of other faiths. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your miracles to us, O God. Move us to cherish you as we behold the wonders of creation. Renew the seas and the soil, the forests and the creatures that live in them. Turn us to ways of living that seek earth's thriving. Merciful God, inspire us to lead with honor, O God. Guide judges and legislators, police and government officials to create and uphold just laws. Move us to treat all people with dignity and guide our conversations with one another. Merciful God, help us comfort those who suffer, O God. Reassure any who are harmed by the wicked acts of others. Bring peace to all who are vulnerable, frightened, despairing, or sick. Especially do we pray this morning for Joe, a person who has suffered two strokes, and others we have been asked to pray for, or who we know are sick. Guide their waking and their sleeping, merciful God. Awaken us, O God. Challenge and encourage your people to value the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all discerning new possibilities or, challenge or changing employment. In all our diverse callings, teach us to love our neighbor above all else. Merciful God, be our hope, O God. We remember with thanksgiving your disciples who died in faith. May their trust in your promise be our protection and our hope. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray as our Lord taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord.